Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And what is this sad creature in front of us? Yes, I know it's an F8U Crusader, but let's be honest, it's pretty rough. What you're looking at is state-of-the-art aircraft kit modeling from 1957, Aurora to be exact. When I was a kid in the late 70s, early 80s, I was lucky enough to have a membership in a Model of the Month Club. Every month I receive a plain brown box in the mail, and it would contain a model. Sometimes it would be Monogram, sometimes Ravel, and even Aurora. The subjects varied from planes to cars to armor. Sometimes I would be excited about the subject, sometimes not. I'm pretty sure I wasn't excited about the Crusader from Aurora. Let's face it, despite its popularity with U.S. Navy pilots, it's kind of funny looking. Another problem this kit had was my example was defective. It suffered from numerous short shots, particularly in the landing gear. I made several half-hearted attempts to complete it, but I never got too far. Other than being a pack rat, I have no idea why I still have this thing. Included with each kit was a small paper poster of the box art, which I'll flash up now. So let's take a look at this beauty. Well, as you can see, lots and lots of rivets. Tons and tons of rivets. Although, the most of the panel lines were recessed. And if we flip it over, you can see it's only got one landing gear. That's because the other one was only about half there. Like I said before, had some short shots. This slot here, if I recall, was for the stand so you could pose it in a flying condition. The interesting thing is, is the landing gear doors were movable, which was kind of interesting. But once again, it was let down by the fact that a lot of the smaller parts weren't really molded properly. And yes, these markings are painted on. If we look here, you can see that Aurora had thoughtfully molded the markings onto the plane. And I don't know if I had lost the decals or if I never had them. But at one point I figured, hey, since the markings are there, I'll just hand paint them in. So it looks pretty rough, that's for sure. And dusty. So anyway, one of the, one of the really neat parts of this kit, though, was, as you could see on the box art, the tail was removable. So you could show the engine. Let's see if we can get the engine out. Urgh. There we go. The engine is out. And the engine, somebody put an awful lot of effort into molding this engine. Really, there's a lot of detail in here. How much of it is accurate, I don't know. But you know what? It's probably pretty good. Oh, there's a little bit of a dent back here. You can see that. You know, and once again... It was, uh, there was a lot of short shots in this kit. The molding didn't exactly go as it should. But you know what? This is pretty cool looking. You know, it wasn't until I was editing this that I realized, I haven't told you what kind of engine this is. It's a Pratt Whitney J57. And this was the first engine, the first American engine, to develop more than 10,000 pounds of thrust. And it was used in the B-52 Strata Fortress, KC-135 Strata Tanker, the B-57 Canberra. Civilian-wise, it was used by the Boeing 707 and the Douglas DC-8. Fighter-wise, it was used in the F-8 Crusader, the F-100 Super Sabre, and let's not forget the Lockheed U-2. So, let's go back to that other guy. Well, pondering what I was going to do about the front of the F-16 engine that I ended up scratch building, I came across this. And one of the things I like to do occasionally is resurrect crap from my early days of modeling. Now, I know this kit was 1,150 scale, but that's awfully close to 148 scale. And you know what? If this was painted up really nice and I fixed some of the flaws in it, if you put this on a stand, it would look like one of those stuffed and mounted engines that you'll see in aircraft museums and stuff like that. And I think that'd be a cool project. So let's take this over to the clutter zone and see if we can put some lipstick on this pig. 
Now, I was tempted to start prying this thing apart, but it seems that I actually did a, a pretty thorough job of gluing it together way back when. Only here was the seam a little bit loose, and so I just basically and ran a little bit of glue in there to make sure that it wasn't going to come apart. Next step is going to be I'll, I'll throw a little bit of putty in the sink marks and things like that so we can start cleaning it up. Now the fit of the intake onto the front of the engine was never a good fit, but a little bit of sanding and cleaning up took care of that and now it goes on really good. I don't know why I didn't think of that about 30 years ago. I've done some filing along the seam and before I use any more filler, I'm just going to put some gray primer on there just to see how much of this seam is going to have to be puttied and how much of it is good the way it is. You know, it just occurred to me that at this point, I don't know if this is right side up or this is right side up. I guess I'm going to have to do a little more research and figure that out. So you can see I've done a lot of sanding and some puttying along the, the top and the bottom of the engine. And of course right here where there was that short shot where it really wasn't molded completely, I had to fill that. And I'm just using this file here. You can see the Hopefully you can see. There you go. You can see it's kind of a very, very sharp triangular shape to the file. And I'm just using the existing mold to basically file along and reestablish those lines. So there's the, the tailpipe with the lines reestablished through the putty. Of course, we're going to have to wait until we get it painted up to see how that looks. But I think it looks pretty good so far. I have found me some evergreen I-beam. Here's the size, 1 8 or 3.2 millimeter. And I think that will make a really nice framework that we can mount our engine on to go in our mythical museum. So this is going to be the frame of our display stand for our engine. And I will be putting a set of wheels here at the very front and they'll kind of pivot uh, or at least be represented to pivot and then I'll probably put another set of wheels about back here. The reason that the cradles are not even is because most of the weight is between here and here. This section here is just basically the jet pipe and the afterburner section. There's not a whole lot of uh, guts to this part of the engine so they would tend to want to support the main portions here I don't know I'm just making this stuff up now before it gave up its nose for some nobler purpose this grossly out of scale end scale bus had some wheels on it obviously and here are four of those wheels actually three of them Here's the fourth one. At any rate, the four wheels off the end scale kind of Greyhound bus are going to serve as the wheels for our engine display dolly. So my plan for painting this is to go jet exhaust, gun metal, this is going to be steel, and then the front of the compressor wheel is going to be a nice bright silver with various other silvers and grays picked out on it. The idea being is this was once a, a, an engine out of a plane. It had been used. Now it's on display. I will mention too that the outer ring of the exhaust was a lot thicker than this. I did thin this out quite a bit. So I'm going to be starting with the jet exhaust and then working my way up.
Now here's an idea you might want to try sometime. Sharpie makes a bright silver marker and if it's in good shape you can use it for highlighting details. Certainly saves a little bit of time. So here's a display cart all painted up with um, I believe it's testers uh, intermediate blue which is a navy color and I was kind of struggling for what color I was going to paint this yellow uh, silver gray black and then I was actually using the intermediate blue on the engine and I thought hey that would be appropriate the wheels are painted uh, German gray and these lovely hubcaps, I almost painted them silver, which would have been really gaudy. And then uh, good sense prevailed, and I just painted them with the same blue that I did the rest of the buggy. And here's our engine all painted up. Now it's just time for a few finishing touches. So to create the sign, all I'm going to do is I've, I've printed Pratt & Whitney J57 engine on a piece of paper using stencil. Uh, military museums just love making all their signs and stencils. And this does it for our one episode build or putting lipstick on a pig. We have a fairly nice J57 engine mounted on a little trolley that we can put next to a suitable jet. I don't have a Crusader I could put it next to, but I do have a Crusader kit. Maybe sometime in the future this will go in front of the sort of plane that it comes out of, just not the Aurora kit. I think it was worth the effort. And as a postscript, some of you may be realizing that, oh, I've got this cool little turny thing here. And this was courtesy of my dad. He happened to have been watching the video, which I said I didn't have a turntable. And he said, I've got something that might help. And this is from the underside of a TV stand that he had. And he said, I know that's around somewhere. See, so I'm not the only one that doesn't throw things out. And all it is is just this stand with a chunk of particle board on top of it. And what I might do in the future is I might put a mirror on one side, leave the other side white. And it certainly makes things easier for displaying stuff for the channel. So, until next time, thanks for watching Dan's Model Works and keep on modeling.